When Bentley introduced the Bentayga, they claimed it was the first luxury SUV, and depending on your definition of that, it's certainly true. However, the marketplace has become incredibly crowded with cars like Cullinan and Urus, and Aston Martin bringing the DBX out later this year. So, Bentley's trying to keep up and has refreshed the Bentayga with this, the new Bentayga. Now, under the skin, the car is quite similar. It will have the same 542 brake horsepower V8 engine on launch with the speed and hybrid variants coming later on. But there's quite a lot of design changes to the car. So how do you spot a new Bentayga from an old one? Well, let's run you through those changes. The rear arguably is where the most has changed on the new Bentayga. First of all, there's this really large new rear wing. The old car had a much snubbier rear wing here. The new design allows it to balance out a stronger front that we'll look at a little bit later. But the new thing for me that I really love the most is this new center section here. The rear lights have replaced the old B lights that were on the old Bentayga. They had the actual shape of the letter B. And when that came out, I really liked it. But now seeing these new lights, I've completely forgotten about those ones. These are now amazing looking and a great alternative. They have this amazing 3D matrix has this wonderful depth feeling to it and looks incredible. This center section is a lot simpler and has more in common now with the new Flying Spur and the new Continental GT and it brings all of the cars in the Bentley family closer together design-wise. It's a far more contemporary look. We've just been looking at the old Bentayga over on the other side of the room and it really shows how much a whole bunch of tiny changes can really change the overall feel of an entire section of the car. There's a new placement for the number plate and the exhausts have replaced that kind of binocular feel with a more simplified double exhaust on either side. Overall, it gives an extremely modern, extremely clean, really nice look to it and will make this instantly recognizable as the new Bentayga over the old one, which is good because around the side, not as much has changed. There's a new wheel option. These ones look fantastic. Now, whether or not you like directional wheels or not, to me, these look like they're on backwards. For me, they should rotate the other way, but that's the curse of the directional wheel. This is a new wheel shape, only available on the new Bentayga. Most of the doors look exactly the same because they are. The biggest detail change is the Flying B vent right here. It's always a place for Bentley to kind of show off a new design trait and on the new Bentayga, that's what it looks like. Round the front though are the rest of the most recognizable changes to the design. The new Bentayga has a far more oval light design that still uses that cut glass crystal feel. Henry obviously looked at the kind of cut glass feel to the lights in the new Continental GT and that's now available across the range now that we can get it in the Bentley Bentayga as well. The front grille, larger, more imposing, slightly higher, still kind of the matrix grille design, but it's a lot more imposing. That shape is a bit squarer and the whole thing lifts up a bit higher. Down here, we used to have the winglets that would separate this section and would allow the lower grille to flow into the side intakes. Now it comes straight down, makes this whole thing feel a little bit narrower in design. And it leaves this with a new, for the fog light housing is now squarer. Overall though, at a glance, the whole thing feels not quite as different to the old Bentayga as the rear does, but still those little changes all add up to make the car, well, keep up. It's a more modern and fresh look, slightly cleaner in places where it now may have felt a little bit cluttered in the old Bentayga. It's evolution rather than revolution, but hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The Bentayga always looked great. Where there's another raft of changes though, is in the interior. As good as the exterior of a Bentley can look, it's always the interior where the company absolutely shines. And the new Bentayga is obviously the same. There's a couple of new details though that are unique to the new Bentayga that are worth pointing out. There's a new finish available on metal surfaces here that's like a diamond cut, brushed aluminium feel that gives this 3D shape. It feels smooth to the touch, but it looks like it's rough and sharp. It's, it's quite special, one of the options available. Bentley's also given a new option on the metal knurling that you get around dials. Bentley loves a knurling and will not leave any opportunity unused to come up with a new way of giving some metal tactile feedback. You feel that on the edge of any kind of metal dial and shape on the organ stops here for the, the vents. These vents as well have a new shape to them that kind of echoes the old light design that Bentley had, this fine B. The interior is crowned off with some new tech as well. There's a new all digital instrument cluster right in front of you, which is reminiscent of quite a few different brands that are doing that, including Audi, uh, no surprise there. And there's a new 10.3 inch infotainment screen. This includes now wireless CarPlay, yay! 
I've seen that on Audis before and it is great. Instead of plugging your iPhone into a cable, you can just chuck it in the wireless charging bay there and Apple CarPlay immediately kicks in. It's brilliant if you haven't tried it yet. It's fantastic. And Android Auto is also available. In the rear, there's more legroom, but not just more legroom. There's also more recline room. And because of that, you get more knee room. There's now, Bentley says, more room in the rear than you get in a long wheelbase Range Rover, which remains to be seen. I'll test it out when we go for a proper drive at some point and see how comfortable it actually is back there. But there is now from sitting there, it does feel like there's a little bit more legroom, a little bit more space. Bentley says that it's now more comfortable and more luxurious than the Bentayga has ever been. Something that seems entirely impossible given how comfortable and luxurious the old Bentayga was, but they think they've done it. Obviously the leather is of the highest possible quality. Bentley leather is an industry leading standard and the exquisite stitching and detailing absolutely everywhere is divine. Overall, there are enough changes on this car to distinguish it from the outgoing model. There's enough here that will keep people interested even though the drivetrain is exactly the same. There's a slight change to the rear wheel track. Both wheels have been pushed out 10 millimeters each which should give the car a better stance on the road and could improve handling. We'll get to drive the car in a couple of months time and we'll have to wait until then to find out if that makes a significant enough change to how the car drives. But considering that the Bentley was already pretty amazing at so many things, there wasn't really much it had to improve. The small changes in the interior and the exterior add a few more toys and a few tweaks to the looks that still keep this car fresh. And in a year where DBX is coming to market, that's going to be really important. More and more competitors are stacking up and although the Bentayga has been outselling all newcomers to this sector, well, to stay there, it has to make some changes and that's what it's done. With the hybrid version and the speed version coming later on, there'll be a whole raft of Bentaygas to choose from. But for now, at launch, it's only going to be the V8 petrol that is available. But that car is no slouch and I can't wait to take it out for a spin.